Hey, this is Phoenix and another session with Emily Roberts. Yeah, one of our correspondents from British Columbia, Canada. What's so great about her is that she is an adventure rider who does outlandish things. And one of the most recent things she did, she traveled from Revelstoke, BC, all the way to Ontario, basically across Canada, in the fall. Emily Roberts. Emily, I used to have hair like yours. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, Every I, time. I suppose. <laughs> well, that would be way too kind. Okay, so whereabouts are you right now at this moment? Uh, I'm in Revelstoke in my office. Um, sweet office, may I say. Yeah, well, it's actually a spare bedroom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a multi-purpose I, office. <laughs> I just do this corner because it's a bit better. And normally I have a picture of George Costanza, but he's down right now. So uh, George so Costanza. Okay. She's yeah, a Seinfeld uh, geek. The, I love it. Yes, it's, uh, I'll, I'll show you just because you'll probably enjoy it. It is the timeless art of seduction. Let's see. You, oh my <laughs> goodness. But we've, uh, we've just been doing some renos, so I took it down for these to do a couple of renos in the room and haven't put it up yet. <laughs> You know what? You got guts to show me that poster. That's fantastic. You know, I thought maybe it'd be something it's like great. boy band or whatever, but no, not you, Emily. No. Oh, you're hilarious. No, yeah. <laughs> the best part was I got it for my mom when for her 40th birthday, I think, and she ended up giving it to me thinking that it was uh, inappropriate to sit above her fireplace anymore. Oh, so. my gosh. <laughs> I love I love you. I love your family. You guys are great. I should mention that Emily Roberts is a writer and contributor to Motorcycle Mojo magazine, www.motorcyclemojo.com. One of the things that I love about talking with you is that you, every time I talk with you, there is an adventure surrounding you. And the most recent one, which I absolutely am fascinated by, is a fall trip you took from Revelstoke to Ontario, and I'm assuming back. Uh, no, I actually ended up leaving the bike there. So the reason why I did this trip was I had a BMW GS1250 for the summer. That was a long-term test ride. Um, I absolutely loved it. And somehow I had to get it back to Ontario for the fall before the insurance ran out. So when you say a, when you say a fall ride, what month did you leave? Uh, I left uh, September 26th. So it ended up being a 90 trip. Um, September 26th to October uh, 5th or 6th, I believe. Um, and it was the latest I've ever attempted to do a trip like that. It will be mm. the latest I'll ever attempt to do another trip like that because uh, <laughs> I, I would wake up each morning from camping and it'd be minus three outside and I'd have to get on the bike and start riding. Oh. And the, the highest temperature I got was 11 degrees and it poured every single day that I was on there. I was lucky enough to have good waterproof gear, not waterproof boots and uh, uh, what, well, what about a heated jacket did you have any <laughs> heated jacket did you have a heated jacket or anything no no i didn't uh i had heated <laughs> hand grips which was a first for me um <laughs> they're awesome say, aren't they uh, oh amazing and that was the life changer for me to be able to have warm hands at least mm -hmm. um i've always ridden uh my naked sport bike back and forth across the country and so to be riding a, an adventure bike that's built for touring and has heated grips was an absolute pleasure um the heated other heated gear did not exist for me though i did not have heated gear well note to self uh, going into next year maybe you might want to just link up at mojo magazine with some of those manufacturers that have heated gear so that you can test it out yes I actually bought a, a Ewell heated vest afterwards because I uh, I learned from my After. mistakes. I was regretting it. <laughs> uh, one thing I love about what you do too, you know, anybody like your, you, you went by yourself, I'm guessing. Yep. So, you know, here's a young lady with really long hair <laughs> on this killer of a motorcycle cruising across Canada late in the or mid fall, give or take. And, you know, I'm thinking you're staying at a hotel here, staying at a nice hotel there. But no, 
not Miss Emily. You just decided. You decided. I'm guessing consciously to make a couple of stops camping. Yes. I don't, I don't always know what goes through my mind when I get ready for these trips, but I think there's, there's always this moment of, you know what, I could be more hardcore than anybody else if I just camp, which really sucked. I, I ended up uh, staying in a hotel for uh, most of the nights, but I camped uh, two nights overall. Um, the first night was in Manitoba and, or sorry, was in Saskatchewan. And it was cold. It was windy. My tarp was blowing everywhere. Mm. Um, the second time I tried to camp, I was uh, just north of Winnipeg in this beautiful um, kind of reserve area and hoping to go to a uh, national park. It turns out all of them were closed and they closed Labor Day. So I ended up uh, finding a campsite, setting up. And as I was going to bed, I... I looked up to get uh, my bottle of water and all I see is two eyes staring at me in the bushes about five wow. feet away from me. And okay. completely by myself, it's 11 o'clock at night or so. And I just see these eyes and they kind of look away. They poke around, they move over five feet. They look at me again. Wow. And at that point, that was, that was kind of the tipping point for me. I'm like, you know what? I, I can't do that by myself. I'm not comfortable. And we, we actually had a standoff for about 40 minutes. I had my bike running, turning on the throttle, and it just kind Jeez. of circled around the campsite watching me. So it was it was a very scary moment. Um, I ended up camp, uh, packing up my campsite at midnight and wow. riding to try and find somewhere else to stay. Uh, so that was that was probably my worst camping experience I've ever had. <laughs> But from that point forward, you found a few hotels along the way and thought, yeah. okay, I'm safe, I'm warm, <laughs> I'm dry. This yeah. might be the way to go. Yeah. So, well, I, so Mike, the, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say the, the biggest part uh, that I experienced too is just by the time you're done a 12-hour day in the rain, your, oh, yeah. every, your helmet's soaked, your gloves are soaked, your boots are soaked. There's really nothing else that's better than putting them by a heater in a hotel. So um, finding the cheapest motels that I could find and just staying there and blasting heaters and getting space heaters in the in the hotel room oh, yeah. and, uh, and warming everything up was great. Yeah. Let me ask you about the BMW in the rain, because if I understand you correctly, this entire trip was basically in the rain. How did it handle? Uh, phenomenal. Yeah, it had the, uh, the Michelin Anarchy tires on it. Mm -hmm. um, which are a great adventure tire overall. If, uh, throughout the whole summer, I was quite impressed with how well they, they handled. Um, in the rain, it was absolutely awesome. It has just enough protection that you stay comfortable throughout the whole day. Um, and again, the heated grips were key, but that the engine, the ergonomics of the bike for touring in any sort of condition on any sort of train, are, it's just such a well-rounded bike. So would you ever do this again? Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm guessing you're probably going to say, of year. yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> when it, maybe, maybe it's a little bit warmer, but is there something cool about riding by yourself or would you have ridden with somebody else if there was an opportunity? Um, you, you know, I get that asked that quite often. So, um, this was my seventh time riding across the country. Um, and five out of the seven times I've done it by myself. Uh, I really, I really enjoy it. There's something so spectacular and kind of um the self exploration that happens when you travel yeah. by yourself and you do the solo travel that makes you not only love the world and your experience so much more um but it, it you find a lot of yourself which i really love and the, the worst part about not traveling with people is that you don't get to share those memories mm -hmm. in the same way that you've gotten to experience it but uh, if I did have to travel with a partner, it'd be my my dad. <laughs> Honestly, I love traveling Aww. with my dad. That's who I travel with if I don't travel by myself. So yeah, because he gets it. He he gets it. Yeah. He gets probably everything you just said. He probably says, "Yeah, honey, I can relate to exactly what you're saying." Aww. Oh, totally. And I think it's really important when you do find a riding partner. You know, me and my father, we have the same pace. We we know that we don't like to stop too much. We like to take a gravel road. We like to explore a little bit. And so when you do find somebody that you really jive with in terms of riding style and personality, that's, that's really important.
Hundred percent. Um, is it true that you have a new addition to the family? Yes, I've got a new baby. It's Let's hear about it. Seven ninety. <laughs> Say again. Uh, it's a KTM seven ninety adventurer. I'm Why so this one? Because you've had so many choices of bikes. Why this one? Uh, you know what? For I've I've gotten to ride a lot of midsize adventure bikes. And this year, uh, being able to get onto the 790 Adventure R for the first time, it just felt like a really good fit. As a smaller rider, somebody who's 5'4", I've, the biggest thing that I struggle with is my height and being able to handle a bike uh, well as a small, light person. Um, so the reason why I really love the KTM is it's got 95 horsepower. It's got a ton of power. It's a sport bike engine. It's got a sporty feel on road, but then once you get it off road, it's so capable and so nimble. And especially because it's got the gas tanks that drop down low over the engine compartments, it gives it this low center of gravity to the, the boxer engine on a BMW. Um, and it gives you the low center of gravity. It actually makes it far easier to pick up than most other bikes where, mm. where the gas tank's situated on the top. Um, and the tank actually ends up acting as a third point of contact when you drop the bike. So you have third that point. point. Yeah. yeah. Similar to the boxer as well. I've, I've always said personally, I prefer to pick up a GS 1200 or 1250 rather than a, like off the ground, rather than a 700 or 750 or 850, because I find it easier with the boxer acting as a right. pivot point when you lift it up. Man, some great points. And that's what I love about you too, is that, when we find out more about you, you definitely know what you're talking about. <laughs> www.motorcyclemojo.com, www.motorcyclemojo.com. Writer, contributor to Motorcycle Mojo magazine. Emily Roberts, um, enjoy the off season. Uh, maybe some some snowboarding, I'm thinking. Yeah, some, some snowboarding, some snowmobiling. We've got uh, lots of snow here right now in Revelstoke. But uh, I'm, I've been debating on throwing some studs on the 790 and doing some ice Ooh. roads with it this year. So we'll see. Well, do me, cross. Yeah. Well, do me a favor. If you do that, let's chat again, okay? Because I would I love will, to hear your sure. experiences, okay? That'd be awesome. Thanks so much, Phoenix.